Hello, this is Daniel Jackson of Beyond the Veil. We are proudly being sponsored by The Rare Enterprise. To really choose your reality, you must have the right tools to facilitate it correctly. The Rare Enterprise has amazing CBD-infused products to help choose your reality when it comes to your skin, emotional, and mental stress. Use the code BTV20 to get a discount on these amazing products. That is BTV20. Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson featuring guest hosts Lana Makara and Miriam Dow in A Family Affair. Hello and welcome to Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson. Me. Today I have two guest hosts. I have Miriam Dow and I have Lana Makara. They are both mother and daughter. So let's just try to get through this one time. Lana Makara is a spiritual advisor, TV and radio host inspirational speaker and award-winning best-selling author and ghostwriter of more than 35 books with a million books sold. She uses hypnosis, guided meditations, and energy healing to heal traumas, quiet anxiety, help addictions, reduce physical pain, dissolve limiting beliefs, and calm phobias for more confidence, more self-worth, and finding your purpose without homework and without willpower. For more information, visit www.lanamakara.com. That's www.lanamakara.com. Also, we have Miriam Dow. Miriam Dow is a medical medium, EIT practitioner, certified hypnotist, and Reiki master. She communicates the body's messages regarding physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and energetic well-being. Having suffered from chronic illness herself, she specializes in helping those with chronic and long-term illness find their way back to feeling joy in their life. Hello, ladies. Hey. Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much for having us today. You are welcome. Thank you for being a part of my show. Today's show, I'm going to call it The Family Affair. And why am I going to call it that? Because you are both uh, intuitives, both mediums. Mm. And you're in the same family, which is, you know, sometimes I come across someone who maybe the wife has the gift or uh, the husband has the gift or maybe one of their children has the gift, but never, you know, mom and daughter. Because I know, uh, I know your, your, your children are, some of them are a little bit on the fence about this and some of them are not. Uh, especially from the background that the two of you have come to or mm -hmm. come from, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, puts a big light on things. So um, let's hear about it from the beginning and how this all started. Where did it come from and, and when did it start for you? Well, I guess it started with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we came from a very religious, conservative background, and I was scared to death of anything that was metaphysical or off the beaten path. But after I um, left my marriage and I started to branch out, I knew, I knew I needed help. I was an emotional wreck. And I was looking for some answers. And um, I, I say God because that's the word I'm used to using. Sure. We all are, I guess. Um, but spirit, God, or whatever. I was at an event and I had a table and I was uh, advertising my marketing company that I had at the time. And this woman came up to the table and she put her hands on the table and she leaned into me and looked me right in my eyes. And she said, we're going to do great things together. And I looked at her like, who are you? I've never seen you before. She said, I am an emotion code practitioner. I'm also an ICU nurse. And I would like to give you a free session so you can see what this is all about. And I'm like, uh, you know, is it scary? And she's like, oh, absolutely not. I just use magnets and, and things like that. And I said, well, okay. Um, do I have to come to your office? And she said, no, I can do it on the phone. And so I did. I had a session with her. And it was amazing. Within, within five minutes, 
She told me that I had a horrible trauma from when I was six years old and using the magnets and so forth, I felt relief. And I got off the phone and I felt like I was like in a new space. I had like the world shifted, you know, for me. Yeah, because where the heck would she know that from, right? Yes. I mean, so it's, it's not magic. No, it isn't. And there was, so I got the book. I got the book, The Emotion Code by Dr. Bradley Nelson. And uh, it really was very explanatory, scientific. It hit all the notes that I could trust, you know, in my space at the time. And Miriam, my daughter, was very sick at the time. And I thought, you know, this might help Miriam. And so I said to her, you, you need to see this woman, Ruth Kent, you need to see her. Um, and she can do a session with you over the phone and I will pay for it. And, and Miriam's like, what is it? I'm like, well, I don't really know, but it's, it's about magnets and scientific and it's okay. And, and so Miriam had her session with Ruth. Uh, yes, I was a junior in college at the time. And um, I, was, I was in considerable physical pain. I, I had chronic fatigue. Um, I had not yet reached the point of that I was going to reach in a few years, although I didn't know it. But this incident actually probably saved my life because um, it gave me hope. Sure. Because everything else that I had done, I just seemed like more pain was coming up and more pain was coming up, but it wasn't like there was no relief. And, and you know, I was in a very um, conservative Christian college at the time, university, and, um, and it like nothing was working. And so um, I didn't know who Ruth was. Uh, I but mom didn't have much money at the time and she had paid for the session. And I was like, well, if she thought it was important enough that she could take something out of her budget to actually pay for me, then I better pay attention. So um, I found an empty room and I had, um, and I, uh, somehow we worked the phone out anyway. Um, it was a, it was a phone session. It was, um, I had never met her. She'd never met me. I was just hearing her voice for the first time and she tuned in and, um, she says to me, uh, well, you have a lot of heart walls, she says, and, um, you have no will to live. And I started crying and I said, I couldn't have told you that, but now that you tell me, say those words to me, I know that it's true. She hit home. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I, I never had a desire to kill myself. Like, it, it never was never suicidal. But at the same time, if I had walked in, in, inadvertently in front of a bus, it would have been all the same to me, sure. you know? <laughs> sure. Sure, because we don't always have to think, oh, I'm going to do this to myself. I'm going to do that to myself. But we know there's probably an inevitable end that I'm not going to be here for much longer. Yes. Uh, so at that point, I was... Um, you know, she not only told me that, but she was able to move it. She was able to relieve me of it and the heart walls and whatever. And it was now today, I know it was a very small session. It was, it was a little bit of movement, but it was enough, but it was, it was movement and that was enough. And that's, right. that's what I uh, know with my clients as well. Sometimes we can only move the tiniest little stick from the top of the pile, but that is any relief is so beautiful. Right. The, the tiniest little movement could be for some people just a little bit, but for some people it could be moving mountains and you don't know that until right. it happens. Right. So I, I didn't, I was in college at the time. I was very busy. Um, and I didn't really have much time to like think about it, to process it. And I think I saw the book at your house, but I didn't really study it. I was studying constantly. So I, I didn't really have any mind space for it. Um, I didn't forget about it because it was, it was significant. It was profound to me. Um, but I, I didn't really pursue anything at that time. It was simply, oh my God, that was amazing. And then it was kind of like, on to the next whatever I was doing at the time. Um, it didn't become significant um, until I graduated, the summer after I graduated, when I did collapse. And then when I did and I found out the doctors didn't know what was wrong with me, that was what led me back to, okay, there are alterna our alternatives. I have felt relief before. I can find something that will give me not just relief, but um, take me into a better place than I am in now. And so I think by her, her doing that session and by Ruth 
holding that space for me, it actually saved my life in a way because there was that hope at the bottom of the well when I reached it. Yeah. So then, but the two of you eventually became mediums, but who who was doing it first? (laughs) That's kind of a funny story (laughs) because... uh, Miriam went back to stay with her dad, and after after she collapsed, she went back to stay with her dad. I was, at the time, living in house shares, and I couldn't bring Miriam with me. So um, I, was re- I was reading the Emotion Code book. I was practicing it on myself. I was having uh, sessions with uh, someone who was a, a, a coach, an energy healer, and I was healing myself. Okay. But... Miriam was getting sicker and sicker, and eventually I did move back to Delaware, where we are now, and Miriam did move in with me. Well, when she moved in, when she moved back with her dad, and I'll let her pick this up, she was now on a mission to find out what was going on with her. Right. So I ended up back at my dad's house, which frankly was not a happy place to be. (laughs) And I won't go into that, but just suffice it to say, it was not, it, there was not a resonance in my soul in that okay. place. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, <laughs> right in fucking miserable on top of that. Sure. We, we pretty much got the picture. <laughs> so, um, so I, I had, I, I got the emotion code book. I didn't have much money, but I had paid off all of my debt before the collapse. There was something in me that said, you have to pay off your credit cards. You have to do this. You have to get everything done. And I did. And it was like I put my house in order before I (laughs) got it. was It was incredible. Well, some people want to do that. They want to make sure that they're able to do it when they can do it. And if they have other things going on, they want to get, well, let me take care of that first. And then I'll take care of myself where we should be looking at ourselves first. Yeah. So anyway, I I had a little money and I, I started looking up. Like I I got the emotion code. I studied the emotion code and I started moving blocks for myself because I mean, God, what else was I going to do? Um, Right. And, um, and so (laughs) I started actually though getting visuals. Like I would go to, to do a block and I would see something happen like it in my third eye. I would see this happen and it was, uh, it was traumatic stuff it was like a man hitting a woman or 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 fire that was set by somebody or you know it was because i was moving blocks you know i wasn't looking at at positive things i was looking at the negative things to get rid of them but i began to see that these blocks were they actually had stories to them and it it freaked me out a little bit uh to be honest it at first and um and about that time, I also began to connect with the spirits of those who were passed. And uh, my grandparents in particular came to me at different times. And, and one of them, um, my dad's dad, actually, who had been a very staunch religious person in his, in his physical life, uh, he came to me and he said, yes, you have a healing gift and this is okay. He said, and I'm going to to give you some of my gift because I didn't use it in this life the way I should have. But sure. I want you to open up and and to use this the way I couldn't. Sure. And so um, I had reassurances like that um, that came to me. So I would and and also I I had a, a personal relationship to what I would now call the ascended master Jesus. Um, and he was my guide. Like if I would ask him, is this okay? And if he said it was all right, regardless of what the religion behind me said, I knew that I could go in that direction. Right, right. And so that's how kind of how I, I called what I walked out of that religion one step at a time, not, not violating my conscience, but, but shaping it in a different way that was more, um, nourishing to my soul. Sure. So, um, I also studied quantum touch. Um, I got a book and I started doing the breathing and I started pushing energy out through my hands and I started seeing energy. Um, and, um, eventually I, one day, and it's so funny because it's like the Kent County catalog came to the house. Now I had never opened the thing in my life. It it comes every six months. The Levy court catalog. Yeah. The Levy court catalog. And it was, I just opened it up and it jumped out at me. Um, what was it called? Guided meditation class. I did not know what the hell the guided meditation was. 
I was frightened to drive at that time. I had just gotten my license. I was a, a nervous wreck, but I knew I needed to go to that class. Sure. And so I, I called the lady and I, I signed up and it was five weeks and it was once a week for five weeks. And um, the first class was just, it was fairly normal. The second class I went to, she's like, we're going to look at spirit guides tonight. And I'm like, who? Uh, she's Who's like, that? animal spirit guides. I'm like, uh, but you know, again, I, I go inside myself and I'm like, is this okay? And then she's like, yes, go, go, go. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> um, this, this lady eventually became my, my Reiki teacher. And uh, she was the, the person who eventually led me into uh, being a Reiki master and opening my gift of healing. Um, so it was, um, it was very synchronistic and I was just literally following the breadcrumbs because I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, and I probably would never would have seen Audra again. Um, but that night, the last night of the class, I, I had come and she, she comes over and she hugs me and she says, my guides are telling me I can grandfather you into my Ricky master class. And I was like, do what now? And that's how I ended up getting all three attunements in one day and then standing at the head of this young man who we were working on and realizing, oh my gosh, I know what I'm doing. I don't know how I know what I'm doing. I, I, I could not explain this to you with, I have no words. It clicked. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that kind of is where I was when, when mom came back to Delaware and, um, and then it was like, mom, you got to try this because by that time I was going once a month to the Reiki share and we were just like four people around a table, put somebody on the table. Everybody works on them. We're, we're, we're working together in tandem. We're seeing things that mesh, like we're understanding what's happening, real transformations going on here. And I said, mom, you got to do this. So, um, <laughs> then I'll, I'll pass it back to mom. <laughs> what happened then? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the meantime, I had been, seeking healing and I was working with this this coach and um, he was a marriage and family therapist and he had a small group intensive for three days which was in the basement of his house in Colorado and I flew to Colorado um, and I had a massive breakthrough that weekend and it was it was so um, you know big for me that I had a hard time grounding back into life again I was sure. you know kind of like spinning a little bit but what happened was my ticket to fly out of Colorado, I booked it on the wrong day. And I ended up, instead of the Monday after the event, it was a week from then. It was a whole week uh, that I was gonna have to stay in Colorado. I was gonna have to inconvenience his family by staying longer. I, I felt so bad about it. And I ended up with this massive pain in my stomach and I thought I was going to have to go to the emergency room. I was so bad. Set you into a panic. It, it put me in a tailspin. And so I called Miriam because I knew Miriam had been working on these gifts, right? And I believe she, you had helped me once before with something mm -hmm. on the phone. And I told her, I said, Miriam, I'm in so much pain. I can't even hardly talk to you right now. I need help. I, I've messed up and I've got, you know, all the stuff going on. And I feel like I can't breathe. Um, but it wasn't a panic attack. It was a pain in my stomach. And she began to move things. I don't know what she was doing. I was on the phone. I was just laying on my bed and I was just like in so much pain. I was cold sweats. And, and again, the, both two in the opposite ends of the United States at, at this time. Yes, I was call. in Delaware and she was right. in Colorado. Yeah. Yes. And so little by little, the pain began to ease and it eased. And after about 15 or 20 minutes on the phone, I had no pain whatsoever. I got off the phone with her. I turned over. I had a really good nap and I woke up and I was back. I was back. I felt better. Um, and that was really the first time that I fully comprehended that Miriam had amazing abilities. There that was something going on. Something was going on. And so it wasn't very long, maybe a month or two later, that I moved back to Delaware. And then we were in the same area. We weren't living together at that point, but we were in the same area. And so Miriam said, you've got to come to these Reiki shares. I'm like, Reiki shares? I don't even know what Reiki is. <laughs> How can I yeah, go to Yeah, the Reiki first time shares? I heard Reiki, I was at this <clears throat> intuition meeting and the girl said, have you ever done about, ever thought about doing Reiki? And I was like, 
I don't like to do yard work. What are you talking about? And she's like, no, Reiki. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And then my wife had to explain it to me. I was like, oh, nope, don't know what that is. Go ahead. <laughs> so it, I knew that it was healing. I knew that it was that it was opening to receive messages from the body. I knew that. And Miriam said, you can so do this. You can so do this. Don't worry about it. Just come. And I'm like, well, okay, I'll try it one time. You know, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to make a fool of myself because I have no idea. Everybody else has got all these, you know, certifications and everything. I'm just like me. I don't know. And so I went to the Reiki share and we had about, I don't know, there was eight, eight or 10 people there and they split everybody into two groups. And so there was two, two tables and each table had like four or five people around and one person on the table and everybody would gather around and put their hands on the person or next to the person on the table. And uh, eyes closed and I saw this guy, his name was Keith. I saw him at six years old hiding behind the door in a dark room. And I said, I see you hiding behind the door in a dark room and you look like you're six years old. And he said, oh yeah, I said, my mother died when I was six and I used to hide behind the door because I didn't want anybody to see me. And that was a huge trauma in his life. And when he confirmed that to me, I was like, wow, I, I had no idea where that came from. I didn't know. Right. You just showed up to this class thinking, eh, we'll see what happens. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. And then all of a sudden you see this guy's trauma. And how are you able to do that? Yeah. How was I? <laughs> Whoa. Right. I mean, it just came in. And now, now it happens after that. Well, we ended up, uh, about a year later, we ended up living together, and Miriam came in uh, to live with me, and um, she began to express to me some of these uh, gifts that I didn't realize that she had, um, and so I'm going to let her take it, you know, to show where she was at that point in the journey, because she scared the living crap out of me. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of lived a secret life for a little while, even from mom. The secret life of Miriam Dell. Yeah, well, because um, I I was uh, watching things about channeling, and I was investigating some things. Like I was doing some research, and and um, my uh, my therapist at the time was was quite uh, psychic himself, so he. Um, he had encouraged me to look at some stuff and I knew it would freak mom out. So I kind of kept it on the down low for a little while because <laughs> freaking mom out was not like really a priority of mine. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, we began to, she, she began to appreciate, you know, the intuitive and, and all of this. And so we began a group. Um, we went to another group and that was just about like talking and, and sharing but there were several people in the group, including the leader herself, who really <clears throat> wanted to have a group that was about developing intuition. And, Do and, I know this person? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yes. And um, it was, uh, we actually put together a group and for about a year we met. Um, and it was a, it was a time of growth. It was a time of, of sharing. It was a time of realizing that there's more to this world than just what you see. And, um, we, we could tell him about the ghost that lived in the house. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There was a ghost in the house and he was a little old man. He had died there. Um, and, um, he, he was quite mischievous. He wasn't malicious by any extent, but he would do things like he would loosen the, um, he would loosen the um, valve under the sink and we would have to call his son in to get him to tighten it. And leaky water, leaky all, over. water all over the place. We had a leak on the stairs of all places, like a pipe that was like a ventilator for the air conditioner, the air conditioner broke and the, the um, fire detector was leaking. And I'm sitting here <laughs> on the stairs looking at this going, and That's this... not normal. <laughs> there is something strange going on here. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, you know, one of our friends is, was a psych, one of the people in the group was a, 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 a psychic eye person. And she's like, oh, yeah, there's a. And we were, we would, we would sit there in the living room and we would kind of talk about him. <laughs> and sometimes he would show up, you know. Well, he knew it. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so um, one time uh, Miriam was upstairs and she was wanting to dress and he, he was in the room because that was his old bedroom. And he would just be kind of hanging out in there. And she said to him, uh, go down to the basement. I'm getting ready to dress. I don't want you in here while I'm dressing. And I was downstairs in my bedroom, and I heard him so clearly say, it's okay, I like the basement. <laughs> and I said, I went to the stairs, and I called his mirror and said, that old guy, that ghost, he just said, it's okay, I like the basement. She said, yeah, that's what he just said to me. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. yeah, it was It was definitely... Well, at least he was uh, a compliant ghost. Yes, you know, yes, yeah, he was very gentlemanly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> his workbench was in the basement. Yeah, yeah he didn't mind hanging sure, out Sure, but I'm, um, you know... Maybe he was just, you know, being nice to you because he's probably going, I've seen this before, but okay. <laughs> that was really our first experience with somebody that had crossed over communicating, and he was not at all scary. There was no maliciousness or anything from him. And yeah, it, it I don't good. remember the conversation in which I introduced channeling to you. I do. Okay, you tell it then. <laughs> We were sitting there and we would do these meditations together and we would watch these videos and it would be binaural beats and things like that. And, and Miriam said, I'm going to channel. And I said, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> do not channel around me. If you're going to do that, you go to your room. You're scaring me to death. <laughs> Miriam, go to your room. <laughs> Yeah. That was and the freak uh, out I was were, trying to how avoid. How old were you at that age? <laughs> and she's going to send you to your room? Okay, mommy. Oh, well. Yeah, she was like 35 at the time. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can do that. You know, go to your room. I know you're 35. Go to your room. <laughs> No, it was okay. Um, so, yeah, I got, I don't know why. I, I just busted out with that, apparently. But um, <laughs> she kind of got around to the idea well later i think you really didn't come around to it until we were on a phone call with somebody about life purpose and um there was question and answer afterwards and um you're supposed to press star, you're supposed two. To press star two in order to get your question asked well she, we were the first like the first or second people up and she tries to hand the phone to me and i said no it's yours <laughs> Like, I thought you were going to ask your so question. Like, no. Nope. <laughs> so she gets on there. He's like, oh, yeah, you have a lot of gifts and trans channel is one of them and blah, 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 blah. And she's like, <gasps> trans my, channel. My daughter just brought this up to me. And now all of a sudden I can do this, too. What are you talking about? Yeah. But the funnier thing happened when the phone hung up. <clears throat> Because at this time, we were kind of used to non-physicals showing up, you know, because that's what happened at that place. And, and we, we kind of knew how to manage them. But this time, we're sitting there talking about it afterwards. She's like, I don't think I want to channel, especially not trans channel. What in the world is happening? And I um, don't want to be Abraham Hicks, yeah, I said. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want to be Esther Hicks. So about that time, this this very distinct presence, like, it's probably one of the most vivid um energetic presences i had ever felt at that time he was he was practically like i could practically see him uh he rushes into the room and he's standing right in front of the fireplace and i'm like who the heck is this because he's not acting like a normal <laughs> there is nothing normal about admar let me just say that there is nothing normal about admar he's here now he's laughing but um he uh he gets to the thing and i'm like and i'm usually the one who handles this so i'm tuning in i'm like hey who are you what are you doing here what do you want he's like oh no i'm here for her and i'm like you butt <laughs> and like mom he's here for you she's like <gasps> she's like go away <laughs> scolding him don't you ever scare me like that again <laughs> yeah because i know when i first met you guys you know i tell you oh i see all these spirits and stuff like that and and everybody and even when i was talking to our other our other friend shabon i would say yeah i see all, and everybody in the room would always be like if i saw a ghost that would just freak me out i'm like i see them every day it's, just, it's okay what's wrong you know but yeah <laughs> that was when i was uh still 
I, I was still at the point where I would sometimes I would look up at the sky and say, am I going to hell? You know, because I was crossing all the lines. Right. Because and, you guys were I mean, we talk about, you know, they were saying they come from a very religious background. But I mean, very religious background. You guys were going over to other countries to teach people about religion and all that. So, yeah, yeah that preacher's was, daughter, preacher's wife. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So it, it took a little while. But in my room alone, then this non non-physical being this presence would come to me in a quiet way and I would begin to hear him and his messages and so forth and but one of the things that I said to him was don't ever scare me do not scare me because I'm afraid anyway right. if you if you jolt me if you jar me you know it's just not going to be good so you know like pointing my finger in his face like do not scare me <laughs> Look at me, ghost. You better not scare me. <laughs> but he became uh, what I he became my main guide and he was my main guide the whole time. And I, he was the one that got me through all those tough times. And when it came up that I could actually talk to him, he was so excited. He couldn't wait to come in and talk to me. But I was still in my, you know, in my 3D archaic thinking and right. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't understand that. It took me probably, I don't know, three, four, five months to at least come into a place where I could be okay with it. Um, and and as a result of that, it, it for both of us, it opened our whole awareness that there is an entire group of benevolent, loving beings around us all the time, sure. uh, protecting us and advising us and helping us. And there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, I try to tell that to people all the time. No one here on this planet is alone. We are. We all have people around us or beings around us that are here that are in our corner all the time that could help us we just have to acknowledge the fact that they're they are there and then reach out to them and ask them for help so how long did it take before you found out that he had a sense of humor uh, well, well pretty I, quick. I knew immediately because i could sense him and i think it just his <clears throat> responses to mom's fear in some ways were very gently you know Come on. He would he would come to me in the car. I would be driving oh, and all of a sudden right. I would feel him in the dry, in the passenger seat. And the messages I was getting from him and I it was so real to me. I could almost, I couldn't see him because I was too scared to see him, but I could I knew he was there and he would be just like a kid looking around. I'm driving in a car. I'm actually in a car. I'm in a car. Wow, this is cool. <laughs> that kind of thing and he's just so light and so loving and so funny. Yeah, and the first yeah. time I channeled him we realized he was absolutely hysterical like absolutely irreverent absolutely very wise but but very lighthearted and and just we would laugh and laugh and laugh and then sometimes I would say something like or she would say something or I would say something depending on which of us was channeling at the time and he would just go off and he would start laughing you know and it was it was just a a very um whimsical in a sense connection that that most people wouldn't expect from spirit but nevertheless there's a lot more of that going on than most people realize sure well a lot of people don't realize like i talk about it all the time when you cross over you have to let go of your pain your anger sorrow grief guilt and they are in a place where there is none of that stuff so when he comes in and goes hey i'm in a car i feel like i'm in a car may he hasn't you know it's different for them because they don't have these all these other issues that we hold on to so much that this distract us from all enjoying ourselves while we are driving our cars and doing mm -hmm. all these other activities we're so distracted by everything else in the world we don't get to do that as much but yeah he's like, he's having a great old time because maybe it's been a long time since he's been a car mm -hmm. or maybe he's never been in one because in the time when he was here you know there were he, none there was none mm -hmm. exactly so he was excited yeah good for him <laughs> Yeah, it, it was a it was a gradual thing. And, and, and first mom started listening to me channeling. And to be honest, we had some very tough conversations to have some of the non physicals like sure. like Christ, because um, <clears throat> the, the view of him had been so twisted in the church. Yes. And then there was this feeling of betrayal because you know, you try to do everything right. And then n nothing goes right, you right. know, trying um, too hard. 
but trying too hard for one thing but but the, the other thing is we weren't playing by the laws of the principles of the universe we were playing by the laws and the principles that man had made up <laughs> right and so um those don't actually work <laughs> right so it really and you hit it right on the nail they were made up by man mm -hmm. i was so mad i was so angry because I had uh, worked so hard in self-denial and sacrifice and obeying the rules and making sure I did everything exactly right and, and all the deprivation and all of the trauma and pain that I went through, 30 years of marriage in that situation, and then it ended so badly and so much heartache and i'm looking up to god and saying why i i did everything you asked me to do why 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 and so at this point we were actually confronting some of those things and christ came into the living room with us and i said to him why why did you do this to me why did you let this happen why is my life a wreck and my, my children won't speak to me. And I just tried my best. And he said, I've been with you the whole time. You've just been going down the wrong road. <laughs> and that's when I realized that, wow, you know, God is so much more than we realize. And, and he's always there and he's not going to condemn us. He's going to help us. And that's what he was trying to do the whole time. I was just going the wrong way. Well, it's because you were told to go that way. Because as you were talking to God, you were saying, God, why? I thought I was doing everything you wanted me to do, but you weren't. You were doing everything that the people within the religion wanted you to do. Yes. You were, you were obeying all the rules, but no, you were obeying their rules, you know. And because if you were breaking their rules, now you are a sinner. But no, God, you know, he put us here to basically figure things out for ourselves but we're we're all these beautiful light beings none of us actually sin we're not doing we're just following the rules that everyone else set for us mm -hmm. and we have to decide that maybe these rules aren't really the rules yeah yes and i i think always say that that the prayer that that took me out and i began to pray this when i was in college because um especially sitting there in that college where I got so much information from my teachers, from the people who spoke in what they called chapel, which we had four days a week, um, from the, the people who visited when we had the missions conference or whatever it was we were doing. Sometimes we had weeks of meetings where we were in meetings all day and partly into the night. You weren't just religious. You were super religious. Well, so. we were required to attend those meetings. So sure. it was, whew. but um, I began to realize I was getting mixed messages. Like it wasn't jiving anymore. Right. Like I you was, up. there was too much that was unexplained. There was too much that was just shoved under the carpet and it, they acted like it wasn't there. Right. And yet I was getting these little pings. Okay, they just said that and moved on, but there's a whole story there they didn't tell that they won't tell because it doesn't jive with what they're trying to get you to believe, right. you know? It's crazy how they made up the stories, but they can't tell you the answers to their own stories because they don't have any because it, it, it's too jumbled. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was confused and, and I was I was <clears throat> wanting to do the right thing. I, I wasn't trying to be a rebel or anything like that, but I no. started praying the prayer, God, show me to me yourself to me as you are and not as I suppose you to be. And it, it was following that prayer that kind of took me out into this different place. I ended up where I did not expect to be at all. And yet I knew I had followed my guidance. So, and then, you know, mom kind of using that, that opening to come through herself, um, as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it really took us both beyond that oppression into a place of, of freedom. Yeah. Joy and, and happiness beyond anything you can even express. Sure. And the feeling of lightness, buoyancy, and joy. And it just keeps getting better and better. I mean, the miraculous things happen that are just to now. They're just mundane, everyday occurrences. Because it was at that point you finally realized, hey... Everything I've been taught my entire life is really not the truth. And now a, late, a weight has been lifted up off your shoulders. And yes. now you're realizing, or you've, you've realized, 
what's really going on. Mm -hmm. What's really going on in this world. And, and it's not, you know, the confines of religion anymore. You know, I mean, it's okay to still believe in God. It's okay to still believe in Jesus and have faith and love for both of them and not be, you know, you know, held down by the confines of religion for that. But uh, religion still doesn't want us to believe in God or Jesus unless we actually are in the religious sect, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, which is a shame, you know, because at some point we need to come together and say, you know what, it's okay. You know, it's, we don't have to just be one type of religion or another type of religion. We can all believe in God. We can all have faith in him and love with him and with Jesus as well and not have to have all these rules and rules and rules. And mm. it's just a it's just a shame. So after the two of you have finally come together on this and then you were in this group uh, with these other people, did you learn other things from these other people as well? We we just opened, I think. It wasn't really like learning information. It was more um, each one of the six women. There were six women that met in our house every month. Was it every month? Every yes, month? Yes, it yeah. was every month. Yeah. Once a month. Um, each had their own way of doing things. And so we watched one of them using oracle cards, and we watched another one doing uh, animal communication. And there was just different th different gifts that were present. Sure. And so it just helped us to see what was out there, what was right. possible in a way that was a human being, you know, that you know that is your friend, is doing this particular thing. And so it just opened us to a lot more open up to some ideas that, oh, maybe I could do that too, or maybe mm -hmm. I could do that or work that into what I do already and yes. and help you with it. Yeah, I mean, that's what uh, that's what the, the best part about is I have found within this community is uh, reaching out to other people and meeting other people. And then they, they like, I've, I've had, uh, as I was telling uh, Miriam, I've had, uh, uh, I've had tarot card readings before and then Someone told me in a, a tarot car reading that, oh, you have this going on. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't even think to explore that. And then when I started exploring it, then there there it was. I just, did, But I just didn't know. But I didn't because I don't always know the right questions to ask at the right time as well. So, But again, you know, your gifts come in when they are supposed to come in as well. So it took you 30 years to, to find this out. But but because of you being in uh, in that religious type of background all the time, I'm sure you probably didn't even think about it ever because the, that that was going against religion altogether to even ask those types of questions as well, right? Right, exactly. It never yeah. even occurred to me to go there. Right. Yeah. But since since then, and that was in 2016, 2016, 2017. Uh, so now it's been about four years later. Our lives are completely transformed. Uh, we channel together uh, just whenever one of us gets an impulse and then we record it and then we uh, talk about it. Sometimes we'll write down questions that we want to ask. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we get information about next steps for ourselves uh, to move here, do this, go there. Or sometimes it's just about the way the world is changing. Right. And I got, we got very clear guidance from channeling, do not watch the news during the pandemic. Do not <laughs> watch the news. Yeah. Get away from the news. It was adamant. And that one piece saved us so much trauma. Sure. Because everyone else is spinning. We don't know what's going on, but we were told not to watch the news. And, you know, we had a good year. 2020 yeah. was yeah. a great year for us. Yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot of people put a put a spin on that and say, oh, this has been horrible and all that stuff. But it's only horrible if you're paying attention to all that mess. Mm -hmm. And we did the same. My wife and I, we, we, we really didn't pay attention to too much of the news because, again, we'd already been through the whole uh, you know pre-president uh, stuff going on and him talking about fake news and then... And then you were starting to see uh, actual proof of fake news going on. And then even though it was going on, people were still complaining. Oh, the news doesn't uh, tell us the right thing or they, they tell us only what they want us to hear. But they're still watching the news, you know, which doesn't make sense. And then they, everyone I know has been caught up in this whole 2020 pandemic mess. And, uh, and they just they they got lost again. And because they got lost in it, they let 
you know, the government and everyone else uh, take control of them all over again by mm-hmm. telling them to wear the masks and going and out, get get the vaccine when you don't really need to get the vaccine or don't really need the mask. But but now now that it's coming around again, they're letting it out and saying, oh, you don't have to have the mask on now. And then I went to Walmart and I looked down and I said, hey, the circles are missing. The circles on the floor are gone. I said to the girl, are we allowed to stand next to each other now? She said, yeah. I said, oh, like we were two years ago because last year didn't really matter anyway. And she just looked at me like, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, because last year didn't matter anyway, because even though you told us not to stand next to each other, but now I can all of a sudden one day later. And then she just looked at me and said, oh, is there something I can help you with, sir? <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, I, m- I messed her up, you know, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just one big crazy mess out there. When they get you to believe a certain way for a certain period of time, mm-hmm. you don't even realize the fact that they just brainwashed you into this. Mm-hmm. And that's what's going on in this yeah, world. And that it's crazy. Goes, that goes back to the, um, that piece about sovereignty and about following your own intuition and your right. own knowing about what is true for you. Not what is true for the masses or, or anybody else's choices, but what is true for you. Right. And uh, and you can't do that if you are knocked off your balance constantly by by information or misinformation or dramatized information or whatever the information may be. Um, if, you're, if you're constantly bombarded with that, then making turning within and finding your own true north is not possible and that's the i think that's part of the point right um is to is to keep us from finding our own true north but um but that's what we were told to do and we actually had like she said a really good year um we reconnected with family in a way that we've never we hadn't for years right and there was a lot of healing um both personally and within the within the family it was just it's beautiful yeah. 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 Everything when, seems to work out more than you thought it was ever going to work out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the the key, the key message to this whole idea of connecting with the non physical world, is that we don't have to look to anyone else to tell us. We can get the information ourselves. Right. And when we do, we know it's the truth. Right. We know it's right. And so the group that you met with, uh, did it stay together or no? Uh, it broke up kind of naturally. We moved to Bethany, but it broke up before that we, by mutual decision. Everyone went, started to get busy doing their own things and, and it just kind of disbanded, but we're still very close friends with, a, with a few of the people. Some of them have kind of gone their own way and it's just like people move away, you right. know, sometimes, fine, yeah. but, um, life moves on. But life then, moves on. then you got into another group. We went to a mediumship group. <laughs> it was kind of random, like it usually is, you know. <laughs> One of our friends was starting a mediumship group. Who, was, the, who was in the previous group, correct? Right. She was one of, the, one of the six women, and we wanted to support her. And we didn't really feel like we needed any help with mediumship. It was kind of happening, on, you know, naturally mm-hmm. on its own. Uh, at that point, we were just kind of starting, but... Um, and so we went to support her, and as we sat there, uh, somebody walked in the door, and uh, guess who? Daniel. Boom. Daniel Jackson. <laughs> and right. he was late because he got lost on his motorcycle. I did. <laughs> I did. Well, the original place that she told me it was going to be at, it wasn't at that place, and the address was somewhere else. And I was like, what's going on here? But she, uh, this other girl, Paige, she finally, I called her up and I could hear everybody talking in the background saying, no, you need to go down this street. No, you need to go down that street. And I'm like, what <laughs> going on? And uh, yeah, and I finally made it there. And then, uh, uh, so as far as I knew, I thought everybody was new to that group. Uh, but really it was only just me, Paige, and Siobhan who were actually the new ones to the group. And it was uh, the two of you and the other person whose name we will not mention. But uh, but they, yeah, and then uh, I was talking to Paige outside for probably about 20 minutes before she even let me in the house. She was like, we're just talking. And then she said, why don't you go inside? And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I will. And I went inside. And as soon as I walked in, it was boom. And you guys looked at me like, <gasps> You were wearing your skeleton jacket. Yeah, I wear my skeleton leather jacket, and I brought all my energy in with me. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It was like a hurricane. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, but but that was a good group as well too because yeah. uh, uh, like uh, how you guys talk about channeling, where I walked in one time because I was so new to everything, I didn't know what was going on, and I I just came in going, Papa, I'm seeing this and seeing this and seeing this, and everybody in the room's like, Oh my God, he's got so much going on, and uh, and then but it eventually calmed down for me by going to the group and mixing with everybody and everybody telling me what was going on and and i was always coming to you guys with all kinds of questions all the time i remember that and then i remember the first time i walked in and uh or one time i walked in and i said uh to one of the girls at the end of it shaban i said hey uh my guides told me that uh, i'm supposed to sit with you and i'm supposed to like clear out my mind and then hold your hands and close your eyes and something's supposed to happen and then you guys turn around and go that's channeling and i said Okay, whatever that is, and let's do it. And yeah, and then, then then we had messages coming through. And then from that point on, every time we channeled, I channeled with each and every person through the room eventually in different times, and all kinds of stuff came through. And I was like, man, this is crazy. But that was, a, that was I tell that to people all the time about that. That was a, a big learning point for me because every time I was just, I was glad to be there because I was always, I was learning so much about me and the acceptance of me that I had to go through mm -hmm. because I remember all the times that mm -hmm. you know messages would come through and yes. they kept saying Daniel you need to accept your gift and stop asking why and stuff and every time I'd go home and tell, talk to my wife she would say I keep telling you that you're not listening to me and I said well it's a little hard when I got you know five women telling me instead of just one woman <laughs> and then I started to bring my wife to the meetings as well and and then that's when everything started to, to get a little bit better. But uh, And that's how I met the two of you. Mm -hmm. And I'm still in contact a little bit with Siobhan. I don't see her too often. And I haven't seen Paige in a while. But, it's I mean, they live across town from me, which is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, maybe the reason that was the reason why. Because the, then you and you guys and us, the four of us, are always in contact with each other. And, mm -hmm. You know, as you thought, oh, I don't need any uh, mediumship skills, and uh, but uh, you show up, and next thing you know, now you got two new friends. So yeah, yeah, that's the way things uh, work sometimes. It is, and it is. You, I remember one time we did that, and uh, as I was holding your hands, and we were in that process of channeling before actually any message came through, I saw. I saw you sitting in a chair and a whole line of people was lined up to come and ask you questions. And uh, to me, it looked like, uh, you know, Santa at the mall. That was all I could think of. Santa at the mall. He's sitting in this chair and all this line of people is coming up. And now, you know, looking at your life, the way it has happened, people come to you for questions. All the time. All the time. All the time. At the time, I couldn't really understand it because everything was so new. But that was real. Yeah, me, and I did grow that beard for a little while. It started <laughs> to look like Santa. But, uh, yeah, I didn't... Uh, I, I said that uh, one time uh, to someone. I was talking about how all this happened. I was there for like a year going to this meeting uh, with these women who were all mediums, and I was asking them questions all the time. And then maybe within nine months, ten months after that, after we were getting together, instead of me asking them questions... People started coming to me for questions, and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. You know, they're asking me questions. But then it was still, you know, it, the best part about it was it was a it was a nice mix of information that we were just sharing, everything that was going on all the time, which which helped me all immensely to, uh, to figure out what was going on with me because I had no idea. Yeah, had you no had a, a rather dramatic introduction to yeah. this world. Um, where mom and I, it was it's obviously more of a gradual, you know, opening, opening, okay, opening a little more. But for you, it was more like, in your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just like there. And then, and then I didn't know where to go to. And then when, so when I finally got into a room that I figured – these are going to be my people. They're going to understand me. Mm -hmm. So I better tell them what's going on. And I just didn't, you know, that's me. I always come out, hey, I got this going on. I got this going on. Oh, my God, what's going on here? Maybe you guys can help me out. And you're, and you're like, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> I think it's really a good uh, example that how important it is to reach out to people. Yes. When you're going through things. Yes, yes. Because if you don't, then you, just, then you, feel, you really do feel like you're alone. And especially in this one, in this type of uh, business, 
uh, through in, uh, doing uh, uh, festivals and stuff that we've been doing, uh, I come in contact with so many people. And the first thing they always ask me is when they sit down with me is, am I going crazy? And I tell them, no, and you're not going crazy. You know? And yeah. even some, I've had a woman one time, she sat with me. She must have asked me three, four times, are you sure I'm not going crazy? Mm -hmm. If you're hearing me talk about it and you're talking about it, and we're talking about the same things about what the world says you are not seeing and you're actually seeing them. No, you're not going crazy. You just have to, like you said, you got to reach out. You got to, you got to get in touch. You got to find your people mm -hmm. because yes. the people you were with, most likely are no longer going to be your people anyway because they don't understand what you're going through and what people don't understand they are afraid of. Mm -hmm. So they get away from that and they, they have to go. And unfortunately for all of us, you know, when 2020 came in, it took a lot of that away because we can no longer go out and be with all these people, these festivals and, and these gatherings and all that. And now hopefully that's starting to come back and hopefully uh, we can reach some more people as well. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I've missed, um, I've missed the festivals and, too, and having a table and being able just to talk to people face to face. It, it has been, if there's one thing that I've missed, it's that, um, yeah. Cause I remember right at the end, at the beginning of 2020, you had thought about getting back into yeah, that again. And, I, and the... I said, yeah, you really should. You should yeah. get back and just get, or maybe we could co, uh, co own a table or something yeah. like that. But mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, boom, you know, and then everything shuts down and mm -hmm. yeah. nothing's happening anymore. But, but I, I, I know it's going to come back. It's starting to come back already. It's, it's, but it's, it's going to be slow at first, but, uh, I'm looking for, I, I miss it too. I miss the the energy that's in the room yes. with all those other yeah. people. Yes. Yeah. And the camaraderie I get with everybody. And mm -hmm. no one was ever really like uh, like in the room with, with competition. Yeah. You know, oh, if you couldn't find one reader that was going to do something for you, there might be somebody else and there right. was many choices. And, and if I if I always thought, you know, there was another guy there, this, uh, this guy named Dino, uh, readings with Dino. And I, and I said, well, you know, there's Dino over there too, you know. If go to one of us, whatever one you are drawn to. Mm -hmm. Oh well, you um you don't is that is that a bad thing because you think I'm going to take money from one place? I said no. As long as you get the message that you need, doesn't make a difference which one of us you go to. As long as you get the message, mm -hmm. you know. And so and that's what I always tried to convey when I was there, trying to tell people, you know, go where you feel best going. And mm -hmm. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Absolutely. I think that's one sign of somebody who's genuine. That's a real, like a benchmark of telling who's genuine and who's not genuine. If if someone says to you, you know, whatever feels good to you, just, you know, if you if you like my table, if you like another table, it doesn't matter. Just you honor you. That is the main thing. That's it. Yeah. That's really a sign of a genuine servant heart open loving heart to give yeah instead of uh you know the huckster kind of a thing right yeah, yeah. oh somebody's trying to sell you some snake oil yeah i remember yeah. going into one of them and then at the end of it at the end of the thing i was sitting around with two of the other mediums and then another one walked over and we all sat down we were just talking we were just talking about regular stuff we weren't talking about mediumship type of stuff but mm -hmm. we were all just how many readings did you get oh i got eight how many did you get oh i got ten awesome great for you and you know mm -hmm. and i'll see you next time and couldn't wait to do that, but uh, next time just never came. Yeah, it was unfortunate, but it's gonna come back. Yeah, it's gonna come back, and and hopefully uh, once that does come back, that more people will start to get their eyes open to it as well, because that type of uh, the festival type thing is is kind of new as well too, where these uh, companies put on these festivals so people can come out and see this. Because I've talked to people since then telling them that hey we're gonna we got some new festivals we're gonna go to and that we go to this, uh, the apothecary shop and she was like there's festivals in this area i said yeah there's been this one called illuminate festivals that's been in the area a few times a few years and mm -hmm. i didn't know about this stuff and but a lot of people don't know about it that's the unfortunate part i don't, I don't know of another way other than you know watching the news to find out what's going on in the area but Maybe with uh, with Facebook and some of these other places, we can we can get that information out there. I just let the apothecary know about a couple of these festivals so they could join in on them too. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 hopeful that they come back out because I I miss that. I miss the people mm -hmm. seeing. It. There was this one uh, lady I used to see there all the time. She had a booth called Mister Happy. Mister Happy was her dog. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Her, her dog's name was Happy. And every time we would go to the festival, the dog would see me and go, oh, there's the man, you know, and he'd come over. And I, he'd, I'd sit there and play with him and play with a ball for him for like 20 minutes before we had to do the show. And, and I, I miss, I mean, she was really nice, but I miss that dog. <laughs> 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 Isn't that always the uh, way? <laughs> yeah, I missed. Oh, I missed that dog. I, I just couldn't wait to get there because I knew the dog was going to be there because she was going to be there. But uh, yeah, I really missed that that part of it. You know, I I found my new family, mm. and now that we haven't been able to yeah. do that for a while, I miss. That's the way of saying I miss my family. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this has been a great episode. You think? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank I you, thought Daniel. so, and I'm glad to have. Miriam and her mom Lana here together and and uh Lana uh in case people missed it in the very beginning of the show how can they get a hold of you cuz you are a hypnotist as well. Yes, I am a healer and a hypnotist. Uh lanamacara.com and I'm on Facebook. Just awesome. look me up. Pretty easy. Yeah. And Miriam, how can they get a hold of you? Um my email address is miriamdow at gmail.com. That's m i r i a m d o w. And um, that's pretty much the best way to get a hold of me is through my email. Okay, good. All right. And it was great to have you here both on Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson. Me. Have a great day. This episode of Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson is being sponsored by The Rare Enterprise. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time on Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson.